if you can imagine yourself walking down the street and, you know, someone perpetrating an act of sexual violence against you, if someone was to intervene, it's reaffirming that this is wrong. This is wrong. It's not just me. Am I, did I imagine that? Did this happen? So it's a witness and it's someone reaffirming that this is not acceptable. Um, and that, that benefit that someone has intervened and someone actually sees that this is not OK can have huge impact psychologically on the person in, in the long term, that they realise, actually, that wasn't right. That person came over. They checked in with me. They knew that this was wrong. So in terms of the recovery for the victim, it can be huge, absolutely huge. In the first instance, the intervention can give rise to support, uh, direction and guidance as to pathways to support, but also it's the listening. It's the I hear you and I believe you. And it's an opportunity to shatter any rape myths that may be playing in the mind of the victim. Was it my fault? Was my skirt too short? Did I lead them on? And those types of, you know, that narrative is, in, is, is constant in society and no doubt is also in the mind of the victim. And it can cause doubts in their mind. It may make them believe that they were somehow at fault. And it's really important to remember that the victim of sexual harassment and assault is never to blame. It only happens because of the behaviour of the perpetrator. So making an intervention at any stage allows the person, the bystander, to support the victim and to allow them to realise that it's not their fault. Intervention is so important in terms of ending rape culture because the more we're calling it out with our friends or strangers, the less acceptable it becomes in society. So it's not just about that individual time that we that we may have intervened it's about creating a more intervention based culture where actually the things around us we're seeing in terms of sexual violence are not acceptable anymore